In this video, I'm going to show you what I feel is the most efficient way to do your daily chores in Animal Crossing, leaving you more time to live life. It might be before work, the train ride in, during your lunch break, before you pick up the kids, or your only quiet time on the, um, throne. Hey YouTube, it's Alexi Giovanni here. It's a brand new day, so let me show you the order I do things to make the most of the game. After getting my call from the Nooklings, I usually check my mail, which you can tell whether you've got new mail with the flag up. For me, it's usually things from Red, which I'll cover off later, online orders for KK songs, messages from villagers, and first thing I do next is head to resident services. I normally beeline to resident services ABD for a few things. I try to maintain my daily streak, which once you hit 7 days you get a bonus 300 Nook Mile points each day you do this. I also check to see what DIY recipes can be bought. These change daily so if you're ever not sure, just try to buy it and it'll tell you whether you've already purchased it. There are other things available, but I tend to make the habit of buying each KK song that's available. You can also get these before 3 stars, but you can't do much with them yet. I'd recommend getting them. Until you have a player, all you can do is hang them up or place them in your house. But when you do have a player, you can register the song and play them for a change of mood in the room or the area. But more on KK a little later. I also check the seasonal section, which again you get to see some rotational items that you normally can't get and are time fixed to particular end dates. By buying items here every day, you work towards the milestone of 100 purchases. After making a hundred of them, you will be rewarded with getting the app on your phone to save you one step, so you don't have to go to the ABD to order some of your goodies each day. Like I've said before, I'm efficiency minded. I try, try being the operative word, to deposit my bells from my pockets to make sure I've got space for the day, and if anyone knows me, knows how many times I've got full pockets. After I'm done with the ABD, I head to the other corner to check the recycle bin. This is a great place to find exclusive items you normally can't get. Cardboard boxes arrive here when a villager moves in, plus other items like rusty parts from Gulliver, but more on that later. I check in with Isabel next to find out about my island evaluations, as it's a chance to see if my island has fallen back on previous ratings, which looks like I've dropped the ball and made my island messy. I do this on purpose, not making my island messy, but doing this check in the morning first so that I know what to do when I'm going around the island. Whilst I'm in the plaza, I use the feature in the game of the birds or the owls at night time to tell me if I've got unread bulletin board items. This includes cute messages from visitors to my island or messages from the game reminding me of seasonal events like the bug off or fishing tourneys. Speaking of bug offs and tourneys, I also do my daily exercises to see who's on my island from an NPC point of view. This includes Daisy Mae on Sunday mornings, Flick or CJ when they visit, LaBelle, Sahara, Kix, and at night time, Celeste. Now that I'm energized, I run to the airport and go to Harv's Island. If you're not yet a three-star island, you can likely skip this part, but if you've unlocked Katrina, I highly recommend doing this as early as possible in the day. You see, Katrina gives you your luck for the day, either good or bad, and there are four categories, wealth, health, friendship, and belongings. In a way, depending on the luck I get will dictate what I do for the day. I've got a video planned to go over the specifics of this, so keep a watch out for that. But if you ever get bad luck, try to have the 10k handy to purify your negativity. You'll get a gift from Katrina the next day for your money, which is actually positively contributing to your HHA score. But more on that later. If you've unlocked the other vendors, I also do my customizations with Cyrus, or get my crops and sell to Leaf. You can also check from Harv's if Red is visiting your island, and if you haven't yet got a 3 star island, I'll leave a link to the video to help you out. Each island has 6 rocks, which every day gives you up to 8 resource goodies like clay, stone, iron, and when lucky, gold. The trick is to either hold yourself in place using items at the corner to ensure you don't bounce back. I make sure I clear all the spots around the rock. 
I normally mash the button at a given speed for the first five hits and then double the speed for hits six to eight. Oh, and you can see that one of six is a daily money rock, which gives you a sweet 16K. And I do this after Katrina on purpose in case I get the good luck with money, which will give you a bonus 10K from the money rock for that day. Speaking of bells, each day you'll see a golden glowing spot. This will give you 1K in the bag, which you can walk away with, but who doesn't like a profit? You should put back ideally the sweet spot of 10k if you can afford it as after 3 days you'll get a guaranteed 30k back. With hard mode I'm only permitted to put back what I dig up, however with Katrina the luck for money would give you 5k rather than 1k. I keep myself a mini money orchard which once one grows to maturity I chop that one down, clear the space, grab the bells and bonus wood. I'm always on the lookout for overhead balloons which have tons of goodies from bells, materials, furniture, DIY or clothing. While I'm doing the rounds for my rocks I'm also looking for weeds which I'll stop for and pick up. This keeps my island looking schmick and ensure I keep a high island star rating. I'm also looking for at least 4 cracks in the ground which signify something buried. Usually these are fossils which if you don't find all four you'll end up finding more the next day for as many as you missed the day before. If you've got a three star island, if the previous day had rain you might find these little guys. Fully grown gyroids. Don't know what these are? Don't worry I'll explain in a moment. I usually do at least one to two laps of the shores looking for shells, clams and the like. Again, once you have Kappen, which I'll cover off later, you'll find these little gyroid fragments, which are half-baked gyroids. If you don't know what to do with these little guys, let me show you one I've prepared from yesterday. You merely dig a hole, bury the fragment and then water it. Once you see toots coming out of the cracks, you know you've done it right. It'll take until the next Animal Crossing day for it to be fully baked into a random one of 35 unique gyroids which you can see collected on my beach. Here's the result of the next day of the one I just planted. So let's swap out this duplicate that you can see and show you what else we can do with these little cuties. Gyroids can be hung on the wall or placed on table and each of them dance to a different frequency to music. They're very adorable. Clams can be dug up and the first time you do you'll learn a recipe for bait. Whenever you have good luck with belongings from Katrina is a great day to dig for clams since your tools won't break for that day. Bait will make it easier to lure those rare fish. On the topic of catching fish and bugs I check my Critopedia for bugs I haven't yet caught based on the month of the year and the time that I'm playing. With the turn of March a whole bunch of new bugs and fish became available. Completing the Critopedia brings a sense of satisfaction along with earning that golden net and rod. Next thing I usually do is shake all my trees with a net in hand of course which you'll soon find out why. Each day you'll get two pieces of furniture which is a great way to collect decorations whether it's indoor or outdoor styling and design. You're looking for bell coins dropping from non-fruit trees like these cedar trees or the bubbly looking ones. There are 10 to be found each day and each one is worth 100 coins adding up to a not too shabby 1000 bells. While you look for those bells or furniture you'll no doubt encounter these beasts. The wasp. Good news is if you do have a net in hand your character will freak and turn towards them just mash that A button as fast as possible. You'll also have an empty wasp net to collect too. You never know just how close or far they are between trees. Being an avid flower breeder, checking the results of my watering from the previous day is high on my list of things to do. Watering flowers on your own only yields a few bread flowers. If I've had five visitors around on my island, I look forward to seeing the golden sparkles which spells a busy gardening day the day next or the day after. Again another reason that I check with Katrina first on the hope that I have a non-breaking tools day which is double bonus. I'm also sure to water all the flowers that I'm concentrating on breeding for this particular cycle. 
Once I've done my rounds for this, I check back with Isabel, who with any luck will give you an improved star rating. Yes, I'm back to five stars, which means I'll have more of these Lily of the Valleys popping up around my island. Each day I head into the water to catch my first scallop of the day. These normally have four visible bubbles and the shadow has a slight chase to it. Which our friend Pascal will exchange for mermaid DIY furniture, mermaid clothing or a pearl, which you'll need for many of these DIY recipes. Oh and it's worth at least once following Pascal to watch him eat the scallop you traded for. After I've collected the four daily fossils, or more if I've missed any of the day before, I might get five, I head to the museum to have them assessed by blathers. Of the four sections of the museum, you're most likely to complete the fossil exhibit one first. So at this stage of the game, for me, anything that I can still donate to blathers is a win. Like the Critopedia, I find a sense of satisfaction and achievement. I'm pretty sure I only have one more piece to donate. Most likely I still have any art that's been delivered by Red still in my pocket which I can donate and check out some of the art history. When I'm done with the donations, I head up to the roost to get myself a coffee. There are a bunch of milestones to reach which gets you exclusive Brewster rewards. I've got a video that explains what they all are and when you get them so check it out after this one. Brewster is adorable always cleaning that single cup, usually all alone, and when you order enough coffees, he'll ask you if you'd like some pigeon milk. I've done a fun video on that as well, so I'll leave that linked in the description. As you enter or exit, you might be lucky enough to catch the usual characters ordering some takeaway coffee like Timmy or Blathers here. For me at least, I tend to my crops straight after the museum as it's right in front. Here I harvest all my crops and water them as well, which I then segue to my selling portion. After the museum and the crops, I head to the cranny to make some bells to buy some stuff. If I wasn't doing hard mode, I'd sell the excess fossils, which is a great way to make some bells. If you are looking for ways to make bells, be sure to check out my video on how to make mo money. Well, thanks for the offer there, Tommy, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to pass. Hard mode and all. If I'd bought turnips the Sunday of this week, I'd check both in the AM, as in before 12pm, and then after, as the amount that these two buy turnips changes twice a day. You can use the Nintendo Online app to track historical rises and falls of the stock market. Looks like I missed the chance of an awesome price on Thursday this week at 558 bells. Your native fruit sells for only 100 bells per unit or 120 with the bell boom ordinance. If you're ever not sure, you can check your passport in the game as a reminder. Foreign fruit sells for five times the price at 500 bells each or 600 bells with the bell boom and crops sell for the sweet spot of 350 or 420 with the ordinance. Great way to make bells, right? Well, another thing I check in daily for is when the shop is open is the hot items, which I tend to favor when I have an abundance of materials or if I find one that makes really good money. On Saturdays after 6 p.m. and when I've had the three star island with Cap'n, I'd go up to get an additional song. I really like doing this when there are a few villagers seated. You can get the full list of songs to get yourself an uncatalogued one which aren't always available for purchase, like the Animal City song. Again when you have a 3 star or higher island you'll have the option to take a mystery boat tour with Cap'n. The cool thing about Cap'n is that he can take you to islands where the time and season is different to your own island. He'll sing you a sea shanty on the way, which is cute in its own right. But if you find yourself getting annoyed by him, just mash that B button to get him to shut up. Each Cap'n Island has a guaranteed bottle on the beach, so I make sure that I grab that. But you may have had times where your intended gyroid fragment is not there at all, but just clay. This will happen if you had bad luck with belongings from Katrina and opted to not pay the 10k for purification. More on mystery tours, this time of the flight variety. 
I tend to hold this for my nighttime playing either before bed or after dinner. This is usually because of the chance of getting better fish and bugs. This is why I drop my slingshot and watering can to make more space. After 7pm, you get the chance of finding Tarantula Island or Scorpion Island, which I've done an in-depth guide of how to pay off your loans quickly in Animal Crossing, which the video is linked above and in the description below. Captain Tours cost you 1000 Nookmal points, whereas Mystery Flights cost you 2000 Nookmal points for a Nookmal's ticket, which you can get from the ABD. On these islands I shake all the trees if they're not all fruit trees as each of these islands has a guaranteed wasp and a piece of furniture. Which is why I do that with a net in hand. Just as I do on my own island I clear the space around the rocks and hit the rocks this time with holes dug at the very corners to hold me in place. And when I'm done I eat a fruit to smash the rocks for one extra stone. I normally keep a stash of commonly used tools like watering cans, slingshots, nets, rods and shovels. If I ever run out of a stash, I usually do a bulk crafting session which involves crafting a set of flimsy variants and then follow through with the better ones. Golden tools take one extra crafting session on top of the flimsy and regular tools. After I'm done, I stash them away for another day. I usually check the map to see if I can see Red's icon near the secret beach. Since you can only buy one piece of art every day, I'm normally very careful and selective as to which ones I get. I've got a video planned for this, so check back for that. If there's nothing else, then I'll grab the always real ones. Some art is always real and others you have to be careful. Like this one, the milk pouring out is meant to be a finer pour. I'll always favour the ones that have fake variants and buy the real ones. I ended up buying the real solemn painting in the back left there. During my daily rounds I try to check in with each one of my villagers and do a double let's chat or let's talk option. Recently with hard mode I had to get a villager photo which I'd never done before. So it allowed me to get into a good habit of targeting just one villager. To make the impact of friendship points, I would grab a duplicate fossil that I had, wrap it up and then gift it to them. If you have Katrina, you can use this response of her saying that they've got puffy eyes as a gauge that you're at the max friendship points to get a 6% chance of a villager photo. Keep a watch for lost items which sometimes look like a book or a bag which you have to find the owner for. Sometimes you might have to offer it to a given villager who will clue you in as to who it belongs to. Or sometimes if you're lucky you'll just get it first go. They will gift you something in return for your troubles. Also watch out for bubbles over the heads which isn't always a bad thing. Sometimes the villagers have fights and it's your job to be the delivery person to make a truce or they'll invite you to their house and sometimes invite themselves to your place. Or sometimes you'll just chat to them and they'll decide to offload some furniture or sweaters. One of my favourites is when they storm you down to give you a reaction. Each personality has a different pool of reactions which is expanded to a secret set if you become besties with them. Speaking of personalities, as I wander past the villager houses, I check to see if there's any smoke coming out of their chimneys and their windows are open. I drop in and say hi for a chance to learn a new DIY recipe or a cooking recipe. As I walk the shores, I might bump into Gulliver or Gulliver, the pirate equivalent. He'll quest you with a task to dig up some communicator parts in the sand if he's the blue one or swimming the sea for sea creatures to find his phone. Each contributes to a milestone of 30 helps to get you the golden shovel. Whenever you help, the next day he'll send you a gift which is worth a fair bit in the HHA point scheme. This brings me to my daily contribution of my weekly HHA score check. I chip away at a few additions or alterations like swapping out colour variants of furniture to make the most of the feng shui bonus. Here's my collection of the HHA achievements from pennant to plaques and now the trophies. 
I'm working towards the 150,000 points for my golden trophy, and I've got a video that goes into more of HHA points if that interests you. Here you'll see that the east side of the room is red, the west side is yellow, and the southern is green. On screen is a video recommendation to you by YouTube, so I hope you enjoy it. Otherwise, check the description for other videos mentioned. Hey, AG Nation, Monty says hi.